Welcome to Trafalgar Square. We're in the heart of London. I'm Saunders CB and I'm about to set out on an all electric road trip from London to Berlin ahead of the next round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. I'll be doing the road trip in the all electric Jaguar I-Pace and because of World Earth Day coming up, we thought why not make this journey that little extra bit sustainable? But it's also a great opportunity to learn about everything that's involved with taking electric cars on long distances from the benefits of driving them, you know, any challenges with charging infrastructure, getting over range anxiety, and pretty much everything else in between we can look at on this journey. So let's get to it. First stop, Eurotunnel. under the water of the English Channel into Calais. And I think we're probably good before needing a charge for at least another 150, 160 plus miles. And into the year of tunnel we go. Blows my mind every time. Welcome to France. Now this road trip can officially begin. Let's get this European leg under the way. So now's a good chance to talk you through the journey we're going to be taking. So we're in France right now, we're heading to Berlin. The total journey, London to Berlin, is a little under 700 miles. Now we've already done 100 of that just by getting to the tunnel and then the tunnel itself. So we've got quite a bit left to do. We could just blitz it all the way to Berlin but where's the fun in that? That's not what road trips are about. Road trips are about finding interesting road, finding interesting places to stop, having a bit of fun, seeing new places, that sort of thing. So that's what we're gonna be doing. The, the rough route that we've set ourselves out is France, into Belgium, across Belgium, uh, into Germany, and then right across Germany. But apart from that, we don't know what we'll come across. So set a charger point to, to get some juice before our, our first stop. Uh, and I thought it was gonna be a little bit touch and go to get there in time, but it's two and a half miles away and we've got 44 left on the range. So we're absolutely laughing. That out. Right click, it's locked in. It's literally as simple as this, guys. I'm plugged in, scan my card, Pick the car we want, that one. And we're in, we're off. It's literally that simple. And just like that, energy is coming into the car and we're good to go, love it. Look at this, we have been plugged in for a matter of seconds and we're already hitting 80, 81. Look, we're gonna be firing 100 kilowatt charging speed in no problem. And that's what this iPace can do, 100 kilowatt, which we're talking 40 minutes up to 80%. 80%. And we don't even need 80% for the rest of our journey. We probably need maybe 50, 60, so we're gonna be here like 20 minutes before we have to leave. So as we have got 84%, we've got more than enough to get to our first destination, our first overnight in Dusseldorf. Let's go over to navigation on Pivi Pro inside the Jaguar. Uh, and the way we do doing all our navigation on this trip is using what three words, which you can do straight into Pivi Pro on the Jaguar. So you just put the three words in. The three words of where we're saying, aha, uh -huh. quite funnily, rumbles. I always think what the words is quite a fun way of doing navigation. It's just very enjoyable. <laughs> Nat donates. And this is going to give me a pinpoint location of where I need to go. One was Nat donates. That's the one. And the good thing is, well, an important factor of driving electric vehicles is looking at the routes because sometimes there are different options uh, that can drastically change the route. So there might be a route that might be 20, 30 minutes more uh, in length or in, in duration, but crucially, could be maybe 50, 60 miles less in range, you know, like driving on A roads rather than motorways. So let's just go with that with the quickest route. We are gonna get there in just over two hours and we're gonna have 123 miles. So we're on 192, we're gonna have like 70 miles left in the battery and we're gonna charge it overnight anyway. So we are absolutely sorted. So we've just come past Antwerp in Belgium on our way to Germany. And we said we wanted to talk about things that were sustainable. And to the right of me now, what looks like just a tunnel 
which covering trains to, to stop trees falling on them, is an absolute feat of sustainability because on top of that tunnel are 16,000 solar panels. The tunnel goes on for just over two miles and the 16,000 solar panels are doing an incredible job. Now, not only are they powering the railway line and helping to power Antwerp station, which is just a few kilometers that way, they also go towards making an incredible amount of electricity. The same amount of electricity that could power 950 homes a year. And by generating that from the sun, rather than other less clean sources, that's a saving of 2,400 tonnes of CO2 a year. It's just a tunnel, flat roof, put some solar panels on it and look at the good it can do. Absolutely incredible. Right, so we are day two into our road trip to Berlin. Welcome to Dusseldorf. A little bit atmospheric today, a bit moody in the atmosphere, but we like it. Now, to give you a bit of an update of where we are, how we got here. So obviously London to Dusseldorf, we've only stopped to charge once. And one thing I will say is the times we've stopped have not been to charge. It's really been stopping anyway and being able to charge as a bonus, which is a really important thing to say because it hasn't impacted the journey whatsoever. We've stopped once so far since the Eurotunnel, about two and a half hours into driving for a natural rest stop, got enough charge to get here where we've stayed overnight and plugged it in at the hotel car park and now we've got 100% ready to go to our next destination of Hanover, which is about halfway between here and Berlin. We'll be taking the scenic route, checking out some of the cool German roads, seeing what they're about and of course having more fun in the Eiffel. It would be a little bit rude of us not to have a look around while we were here, wouldn't it? Let's see what we can find. So, taking in some of the sites before we leave Dusseldorf, this is Kotbogen 2. Immensely architecturally interesting, as you can see. Imagine living here and seeing this every day. It would be amazing. It's also immensely sustainable because these hedgerows that surround the building are playing a crucial role in urban combat of climate change. It helps biodiversity, it helps pull carbon out of the atmosphere. And even though it might not look like a lot of foliage surrounding this building, it's the equivalent of 80 trees. This is exactly the sort of thing we need to be seeing in more cities around the world. And another benefit of being able to stop where you want on a road trip, onto the next place. Okay, so we have had an absolutely epic day of driving today. Proper cross country, through the mountains, through some what are normally ski resorts in the winter. Amazing stuff. Now it's time to head to Hanover, our next uh, stopover location. I popped it into the nav, into Pivi Pro, um, but my thoughts are this. I would like to top up the charge a little bit before we get to Hanover, so that tomorrow morning, we've got a decent amount to be able to get on the way to the next stop. So I'm gonna use Pivi Pro to do that now. Wow, I mean, there are so many choices. Now these are all 100 kilowatt or more, and we don't need to go that close uh, to here, so we can go a little bit further. Now, these two options look like a good choice. They're about 20 miles, 30 miles outside of our Hanover. Let's do it, add that to the destination as a waypoint, and we're good to go.
Now this might look like quite an unfamiliar scene, a Jaguar I-Pace plugged into a Tesla charger, but this is reality now because there are loads of Tesla chargers all over the place that have been opened up for any electric car to use. And if you go on the Jaguar charging app, you can see Tesla chargers popping up. It's a game changer. Taking a little walk around Hanover this morning, beautiful green surroundings. We've got the new town hall and the lake behind me. Berlin and the Berlin Ypres now just feels like it's in reaching distance. We could have one last blitz up the motorway to get there, but we're gonna have a little interesting drive, maybe a little stop, lunch and a charge. And to say that we've got a scenic route planned, that would be an understatement. So one of the perks of driving in Germany is you get the Autobahn. There's no speed limit, so we can really test out what this I-Pace can do. Right, let's have some fun with it. Let's go dynamic mode, checkered flag, red. You already feel that push. Autobahn, no speed limit. Let's see what the I-Pace can do. Whoa! I'm in awe. How does a car that weighs more than two tons move that quickly when it's already going like 60, 70 miles an hour. Now, I know what you're going to ask. Oh, how much range did you lose doing those fast speeds in the Autobahn? Actually, not that much. That is the full race the road benefits from Formula E data, improving efficiency at high speeds, coming straight into the I-Pace. And we're not losing that much range. Incredible. So there we have it, 680 odd miles later, we've made it to Berlin. So there we go, road trip complete. It was really enjoyable in the all electric Jaguar I-Pace. That car is rapid, packed full of tech, luxurious, and importantly, efficient. So just to summarize on the charging of the trip, we actually only stopped to charge four times. And what's important about that is only one of those times was a dedicated charging stop. The others were all aligned with things we were doing, you know, sleeping in the hotel while it charged underneath, stopping for lunch while it was on charge in the car park. So it didn't actually add any time to the road trip. And plus, alongside the navigation system in the iPace, which was able to suggest chargers along the route, or the Jaguar charging app as well, which has access to more than 450,000 chargers in Europe alone, finding chargers and then charging could not have been easier. My main takeaway is that big electric road trips like this aren't a thing of the future, they're more than possible now. Now there's just one last thing to do before we wrap this up, because the Jaguar TCS racing team have asked me to deliver a very important package to the racetrack. There he is. Hello mate. Oh, welcome to the road trip. How's it going? I'm good mate, I've had such an epic drive here. Thanks for joining me, mate. And uh, a pleasure I can do a, a bit of a solid for you and get you to the circuit. How are, how are things? Yeah, good, mate, good. We've been here a lot as Formula A. A lot is an understatement. <laughs> can I just say, we have been here, like we lived here in season six. Yeah, and now we're back here. How does it feel to be back to begin with? I mean, like you said, you're coming in with a bit of extra confidence, a good boost for the team. I'm optimistic that I can turn around my, my pace and performance at this, at this race weekend. Well, you're in a great place to do it. So, I've been, this is now coming to the end of a pretty epic road trip. Yes. I've driven here from yes. London, 680 yeah. miles. Yeah. It's been mega, but it makes me want to ask you about road trip experiences that you might have had. What's Ooh. been the best one you've ever done? So we were, we were racing in Long Beach. Yes. And we went from there and we went to the Mojave Desert to go and visit the people at Virgin Galactic and the drive out there was super cool. We had like the old school American rock songs on 
um, driving out to the desert. It was just, it was just a cool vibe. What about dream road trip? My dream road trip. Where, not just where it is, it, where is it, but who are you doing it with? Because that's crucial, really. You've got to have good company. I'd have Mitch and I'd have my two dogs in the back. Oh, I love I'd it. have my two dogs. I'd have, I'd have Buddy and Bear. We'd go somewhere where there's a beach so they can have a nice run around. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I'm not sure on the location though. I really don't know. There's too many places to choose from. Yeah, to be fair, on the autobahn, even already going like 70, it was hit in 100 so quick. These, that's the beauty of electric cars and electric mobility. The, the instantaneous torque in these things is outrageous. I don't have the perspective, your perspective of driving the Formula E car, but I've lived what's come into this car in this road trip. You know, being able to hit those high speeds, already going at high speeds on the autobahn, that efficiency is coming straight from the racetrack. So due, due to the work that we put in at Jaguar TCS Racing, um, along with some of our partners, um, we have really improved the efficiency of not only our race car, the mm. i-Type 5, you know, in the Gen 2, the i-Type 6, but also the car that you're sitting in right now. We have improved the range of these vehicles that because is. of the findings that we found on a racetrack. So race to road, is a real thing and it is proving beneficial for Jaguar as a group to have Jaguar TCS racing. Um, and that's only going to continue as a process because by 2025, Jaguar globally is going all electric with all of their new vehicles. And if this is the benchmark, the future is very bright. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see the next phase of electric mobility by Jaguar. And just like that, Mr. Sam Bird delivered to the Formula E circuit. Delivered and on time. Super. Right. Remember that? Legend. Well done. Good job. Thank I'll you. I'll see you over the weekend. Arrived. Tempelhof. SB Avenue. <laughs>